was getting so many notifications. Everyone sent me the same link. A bad feeling stirred inside me. With trembling hands, I followed the link and froze in surprise. I saw myself on the cover of a video with millions of views. How dare they? That was the last draw. I'm Ginny, and your eyes aren't playing tricks on you. I have a very rare disease, vitiligo. If you only knew how many schools I have changed because of the eternal mockery, and I didn't have any special expectations from the new school. But surprisingly, at first everything was fine. It was as if everyone didn't care about my defect. After a while, my classmate asked me to help clean up the pantry. I gladly agreed. When we got to the door, she said, Come in, I'll be right there. I entered, but found myself in pitch darkness. Suddenly, someone grabbed my hands. I felt that I was being tied to a bookcase. Hey, what are you doing? Someone turned on the flashlight. What the hell is going on here? And then I saw my classmate. He was walking towards me, shaking some stuff in his hands. I started to scream. But someone quickly put a hand over my mouth. I tried to bite this cunt, but I couldn't. It was the first time I felt so helpless. They scraped me with paint from head to toe. Now we will fix everything and you won't be so ugly. They shouted. Then I heard a shout. Get out of here. And the sounds of a scuffle. Someone untied me. Are you okay, new girl? I saw two guys in front of me. Why did they stand up for me? The guys introduced themselves. Louis and Rami. A few days later, we were sitting with them in some square when suddenly Rami perked up. You know, I recently found that your spots can be cured. There is some kind of surgery after which you will become ordinary. What? Really? <gasps> it will solve all my problems. The surgery was very expensive, but I firmly decided to save up this amount at all costs and get cured. A couple of weeks later, Rami, Louis, and I agreed to meet again. We saw workers at the neighbor's oh, house. Huh? They were dragging a bunch of boxes oh. with all sorts of expensive stuff. Wow, someone rich moved in. Louis and Rami hmm. looked at me conspiratorially. I didn't immediately understand what they were thinking about. Then Rami quietly said, Doesn't this rich woman want to share with us? I knew that they were stealing and even stood on the lookout in the store several times. But it was all sorts of little things. Just to save money and this was all a full-on robbery. Are you with us? They asked. No. I started to dissuade them. But then Rami noted that this money would be enough for me to have the surgery. Well, maybe you're right. It is risky, but otherwise, I will never save up for it. We immediately began to develop a plan, and my first task was to ingratiate myself with the lady. The next morning, I went to her house and knocked on the door. After a couple of seconds, the door swung open. The woman on the doorstep was dressed simply and wearing sunglasses. Her movements were so strange, as if she's blind. It simplified everything a lot. I politely introduced myself. In response, the woman smiled sweetly and invited me in. I was sitting awkwardly in the living room, looking at the nice furniture while Miss Bloom, that was her name, was talking enthusiastically. I didn't even notice it was evening. We were chatting for so long. On the way home, I felt warm and peaceful. Louis and Rami were already waiting for me and I briefly told them everything I had learned. From that day on, I began to visit Miss Bloom more often. We talked so much that sometimes I even forgot about the robbery. I felt so good around her. The last night before the robbery, I took out my piggy bank to put in a couple more bucks. But when I opened it, I was dumbfounded. It was completely empty. I clenched my fist. Only Rami and Lewis knew about the savings. They just stole everything. I was furious. When I ran out of the house, I immediately found them on the playground. Empty soda cans and a bunch of candy wrappers were lying around. I shouted that I knew they had stolen my money. I wanted them to return everything, but they just chuckled and casually told me to relax because they allegedly spent them on the last preparations and that when everything worked out, each of us would already be rich. Yes, it was true. 
it was the only way I could get the right amount. But inside, there was still a deep resentment against the boys. To pass the time, I went back to Miss Bloom. We were talking when suddenly hundreds of notifications started coming to my phone. What was this? I saw that everyone was discussing some video and marking me in the school chat. Cautiously, I clicked on the link, and I couldn't believe my eyes. The link opened Grammy and Lewis's YouTube channel, where they uploaded… What the hell? The video was called A Loser with Vitiligo Stands on the Lookout While We Steal. Hey, it's me! What the hell? I was surprised to find that they had been posting all kinds of disgusting stuff there for several years. They mocked the elderly and ridiculed people with various diseases. Damn. So they protected me in order to mock me even more behind my back. I was shaking with anger and resentment. Tears welled up in my eyes. Miss Bloom noticed that my breathing had become shallow and asked what was wrong. I couldn't stand it and burst into tears, telling her everything. First about bullying and then about how he wanted to rob her. But I'm doing it all just for the sake of the surgery. I screamed hysterically. I was screaming about how much I hated this body. But then I realized that I had told too much. This was the end. I was already suffocating from despair. But Miss Bloom was surprisingly calm. She came over, gently put her hand on my shoulder and said she had a plan. What was she talking about? The next morning, I met with Rami and Lewis and discussed the plan one last time. The boys were nervous. Apparently, they also saw the messages, but I pretended that I didn't open the chat. And so, on day X, I came to Miss Bloom, but this time, I didn't lock the door behind me. We drank tea and chatted about all sorts of nonsense. Suddenly, I heard a rustle. It started. Still listening to Miss Bloom, I went to the door to the living room and watched Rami and Lewis attack expensive things, like predators. But then something incredible happened. As soon as Lewis touched the console, he was immediately electrocuted. Rami at the same time tried to lift the laptop from the table, but it turned out to be a trap. The gadget was tightly glued to the tabletop, which he successfully tore off along with the laptop. Well, will you take the loot home like this? It worked. I was elated. <laughs> I managed to teach these jerks a lesson. Yesterday, after I told her everything, Miss Bloom let me in on her plan. We decided to set traps all over the house. All evening, she told me what to do and I followed all her instructions. Now they got what they deserved. Because of them, I went through a real nightmare. I looked at Miss Bloom with a laugh. But suddenly, she took off her sunglasses and looked straight into my eyes. I couldn't believe it. Did she see me? What are you staring at? Yes, I'm not blind. Miss Bloom said with a laugh, as if reading my thoughts. I've been subscribed to the channel of these comebacks for a long time, and I've always been so infuriated that they get away with everything. Actually, I also have a channel where I expose such scum. Yeah, they've already run away, but I recorded everything. Now, law enforcement agencies will definitely pay attention to them. I faked all this. <laughs> it's much easier to cheat than steal from a blind person. Jenny, understand you're wonderful. And your body can't affect it in any way. I know that, Miss Bloom said that she had huge birthmarks all over her body since childhood. That was why she always wore long sleeve clothes. And that she understood me perfectly and wanted to help. I was crying, thank you. I whispered to Miss Bloom. Now I have a real friend who accepts me for who I am. And yes, I'm not going to have surgery. Because of the opinions of others, I almost made a terrible mistake. But I'm glad I stopped in time. Did you like the video? Subscribe and like it. Support the channel. Thank you. I was walking on a tightrope at a height of 10 meters. The audience held its breath. A blind gymnast under the very dome of the circus performed the trick without a net. I did a somersault, but the lenses made it hard to see. I almost fell down. The audience burst into applause. Back in the dressing room, 
I rushed to the mirror to get those stupid white lenses off. Everyone thought I was blind, but that was a lie. My father was a circus director, and he thought that for the sake of a blind gymnast, the audience was willing to pay three times more. Ever since my mom died, he had gone off the rails and made me pretend to be blind. I wanted to study at the circus school and become a world star. My father made the condition. If I wanted to leave, I had to earn $100,000 and give it to him, then I would be free. But such a sum was simply unrealistic for me. Dad was waiting for me in the dressing room. He shook the bills and menacingly said that the audience was not enough, all because I did not smile at anyone. Suddenly, there was a knock on the door. I barely had time to put on my sunglasses. A tall, curly-haired guy stood in the doorway. He was so beautiful that I was even taken aback. The guy introduced himself as Ed and said with a bored look that he worked for a foundation to help the blind. They had a grant. And now they were choosing who the fund would allocate money for sight restoration, about $100,000. I didn't understand anything, but my father suddenly jumped up to Ed and began to shake his hand, repeating that we agreed to everything. And he added that Ed should definitely come to us for breakfast the next morning. I was taken aback, and so was Ed apparently, but he said he would come. As soon as Ed left, my father said sharply that I had to get this grant at any cost. But on the other hand, I finally had a chance. Maybe because of this, I could get closer to my dream. The next morning, Ed came to our house. Over tea, he lazily said that there were several candidates for the grant, especially since scammers often wanted to get the money. So he would ask me a few questions about my illness. My father glared at me, and I quickly agreed. He felt the tension and suggested that we go to the park next to the house. On the way, Ed read everything from a piece of paper. Not really listening to me, I tried to keep it interesting, to charm him. But the next question was, what's your relationship with your mom? A lump rose in my throat. Is something wrong? Asked Ed. I gathered my thoughts and told him. My mother was a gymnast, but she fell during a performance. Then I promised myself that I would become a star and conquer the world in memory of my mother. At that moment, a guy rushed by, throwing mud at me. This isn't a bike lane. Ed froze and asked me how I knew a bike had passed us. Damn it. I liked that my hearing had improved after losing my sight. The way Ed looked at me. What if he realized I was lying? Then my alarm went off. I had to run to practice. I had to work hard if I wanted to be a star. Suddenly, Ed said that he would go with me. He would make a video for the foundation with my training. I was very surprised. But I agreed, surely this would help me get a grant. I was very worried, because in training, I did not pretend to be blind. But right now, I needed to be very careful. Under the dome of the circus, I did the most daring acrobatic tricks. And Ed looked at me with admiration for the entire three hours. In the evening, as soon as I went home, my father immediately bombarded me with questions. Did you get the money? When I told him everything, he suddenly shouted that I was stupid. I must have given myself away. I was hurt so bad. Dad, I'm trying my best. In tears, I ran to my room. The next morning, my father burst into my room without knocking. He told me to get ready right away. Ed was waiting for me downstairs. My father wouldn't let me miss a second chance. As soon as I came down, Ed immediately said that he was impressed with my perseverance and added that training was training. But sometimes I needed to relax and he decided to take me to the ocean. I couldn't believe it. It was only a three-hour drive to the ocean, but my dad never took me there. On the way, Ed started talking. Turned out that he grew up in an orphanage, but as soon as he graduated, he immediately rushed to explore the world. Even now, he was saving up for a trip around the world, which was why he worked part-time at the foundation. I thought about it, and I had never been farther than our town. I spent all my free time training. We pulled up the gas station, and Ed went to pay for the gas. And then I saw something in the glove compartment of his car. Could it be a real police badge? Hell, if Ed was a cop and he had been trying to check on me all this time, then soon everyone would know about my deception. My father and I would end up in jail. I heard Ed approaching the car and slammed the glove compartment shut. The main thing was to behave as if nothing had happened. We sat in silence by the ocean. I was afraid to say anything, and Ed looked thoughtfully into the distance. Suddenly, he asked, when I swam in the pool the last time. Why this question? Then Ed suddenly took my hand and started dragging me into the water. I didn't want to. I would get wet, but he said it would do me good. 
He was here and nothing would happen to me. We jumped in the waves and Ed didn't let go of my hand. For the first time in many years, I had so much fun. When we got ashore, Ed got a call. He hung up the phone and said in a drooping voice that the foundation had refused me the money for the surgery. I was silent, and the tears came to my eyes. But why? Ed began to reassure me. I think the money was given to some kid. But he said that he was amazed at my persistence and was sure that I was worthy of the surgery. He was sorry the foundation didn't have another grant for me. I returned home. Not knowing how to tell my father, it was dark in the room when I noticed my dad. He was sitting in a chair and glaring at me. I burst into tears. Dad, the foundation refused to help me. My father was very angry and shouted that if I missed the grant, I would pretend to be blind for the rest of my life and clean the elephant enclosures in the evenings. No more gymnastics. I was taken aback. Dad, why are you doing this to me? All night, I clenched my fists in frustration. What should I do? My father would never let me go without money, and I was not going to give up on my dream. In desperation, I dialed Ed. He quickly picked up the phone and said that he was going to call himself. It was so strange, but I immediately blurted out that I needed help. We need to meet urgently. Ed was silent, but suddenly he said that he would come to me in an hour. A car honked outside a window. I slipped past my father's bedroom and out into the courtyard. I sat down and Ed said we weren't going to talk here. I needed to calm down. We arrived at some building. It was a road restaurant. Then we went inside and sat down at one of the tables. Ed immediately ordered tea for me. God, how was I going to tell him everything? It was terrible, but I had to admit that no one but Ed could save me. And just when I worked up the courage to speak up, Ed interrupted me. He handed me the money and said that he had collected it for a trip around the world. Ed added that it would be enough to live the life I really wanted. What do you mean, Ed? And then I heard the bell behind me. What's going on? I saw my father in the doorway. Not again. He was getting closer, and I was already preparing for the worst. Then my father stopped. I realized that he had noticed the money on the table. My father snatched the bills and told me I had to go home right away. I didn't have time to say anything, and Ed looked dumbfounded. In the car, Dad was counting the money, but suddenly he said that he had changed his mind about letting me go. After all, the image of a blind circus girl could bring him a lot of money, and the maintenance of the circus was very expensive. Outraged, I didn't know what to say. My blood boiled. Dad, you can't do this to me. But Dad said sharply that I didn't dare to contradict him. I was still a child, and I would work in the circus for as long as he said. Ears welled up in my eyes from the hurt. My dream was ruined, but the worst part was that I cheated on Ed, the only person who treated me with kindness. I had to give him the money back, and then run away from my dad, the circus, and everything that had been dragging me down for so many years. In the morning, I heard my dad slam the door. I was home alone. I immediately jumped out of bed and went to his office, to the safe. My hands were shaking. Carefully, I began to sort through the codes. Father's date of birth, a failure. So, what about my mom's? Another failure. Damn, if it doesn't work now, the alarm will go off. I gathered my strength and entered my year of birth. And wow, it worked. Carefully, I took the money. And then the lock clicked at the bottom. My father was back. I barely managed to hide the money in my suit back. My father shouted to me from below that it was time to leave. They were already waiting for us at the circus. I was trembling with excitement. I had never gone against my father before. I was going to run away right after the performance. And finally, my performance was announced. But when I got on stage, I noticed Ed in the back row. What was he doing here? He looked me straight in the eye. I stopped for a second and then continued walking towards the rope. But at that moment, I remembered his phrase. You can live as you want. Then I turned around and went to the microphone. And then I took off my white lenses. The hall hummed in shock. I apologized and said I couldn't live in deception anymore. All this time, I was just pretending to be blind. But recently, I met someone who showed me that we really decided how we lived. I looked at Ed. Then my furious dad ran out into the arena and began to shout and swear. He was already running up to me. My stomach clenched. I didn't know what to do. But suddenly, the police burst into the hall. God, I'm about to get arrested for fraud. But the cops were on their way to my dad. And then one of them snapped the handcuffs on his hands. 
What's going on? Ed ran up to me, and I was confused and begged his forgiveness. I added that I was surprised he hadn't brought me to the station himself. Ed didn't know what I was talking about. I know you're a cop, Ed. I saw the badge in the glove compartment. Suddenly, Ed laughed. He said it was a fake. He was playing a prank on a friend once. I couldn't believe it, and then Ed added that he'd figure it out a long time ago, but he was waiting for me to tell him, and after my confession, he realized that he was not mistaken in me, and he invited me to go around the world with him. After all, it seemed that my father would no longer be able to hold me hostage. I am telling the story on the shore of the Pacific Ocean. Ed and I have already traveled to 50 countries, and this morning, I got a letter from the circus school. I got in. I hope now I can perform that difficult trick. And with it, I can become a world star in memory of my mother.